So we're here with the Nikon Z9 with the new firmware version 2.0. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the new video features and stills features. Now when it comes to video, we wanna talk about that 8K 60 RAW. We also wanna talk about 4K 120 RAW as well. The still side of things. So what's it gonna be like when using this camera with pre-release capture? How can we record people going past us like this when we can't quite see them coming around the corner being able to capture the shot before we even press the shutter button. So we're gonna be looking at some of the stills features, some of the video features, and hopefully get some really cool content as well. Okay, so here we have this really nice little pass by. I'm thinking I'm gonna record this in 8K60. We're gonna get both of the riders to ride past us here. Um, I'm gonna use my camera in just auto area. It's gonna follow those subjects as they come straight through, and they're gonna go off to the right-hand side of my frame. So hopefully it should be a really nice shot. Let's see what we get. He's gonna make his way down here. I'm gonna try and keep him in the frame. Now, I can crop in if I want to in 8K60, if I want a tighter shot, camera follows him through, really easy. Okay, so we've got a really good jump sequence set up here. We're gonna have the riders come towards us and they're gonna jump right in front of my frame and really nice and wide on a 1424. I'm gonna record this in 4K 120. I mean, shooting that in NRAW. Gives me this really nice flexibility to be able to change the highlights and the shadows because we're in this quite dappled lighting here in this wooden environment. So hopefully it's gonna give you some really cool stuff. Now I'm gonna start recording on my camera. You'll notice this new red record frame, which is always Really useful to make sure that you know you're definitely recording and across they come. Good stuff. Now that I've recorded this in 4K 120, as we can see, we can really slow this footage down. So just as they're going into the air and just as they're coming back down, we can really slow that footage down up to five times to give us some really good results. So one of the great things about firmware 2.0 is that we not only get the ability to have all these options that we had previously with ProRes, but we also now have these options to shoot in ProRes RAW, and we have the options to shoot in NRAW. If you did want to shoot in ProRes RAW, you can shoot in 4K60, but because I really want to slow this footage down and get that 4K 120 footage, that's why I'm using Nikon RAW in this instance. All these different resolutions, all these different file formats, they just give you really great flexibility when it comes to you creating your own content. Another great feature that's in firmware 2.0 is extended oversampling. Previously, what used to happen is when you shot 4K 30, that would be oversampled from 8K. Now, if you shoot up to 4K 60, you can have that oversampled from 8K as well. It just gives you a much sharper, overall more detailed 4K 60 video. So one thing that's really easy to demonstrate and really easy to talk about are the new waveforms. This is a really great way of being able to monitor your exposure and your brightness when it comes to shooting video. So as we can see here, as I pan the camera to the right, we can see that that highlight area in the shot comes as a standout point in the waveform and then as I pan back, we can see it goes back to that shadow point. So the really cool thing about waveforms is it's showing you where your highlights are in your frame. It's not just like a overexposure or underexposure. Along with waveform monitoring, those of you that want to use your Z9s exclusively for video and really like to make sure that you can see all of your video information at once, there's a new information display that can display to you your resolution, your frame rate, and a magnitude of all your other video related settings on one single display. In those situations where you really want to fine tune your exposure and make sure you get the accurate ISO that you need for what you're trying to film, you can now make adjustments to your ISO up to one sixth of a stop EV steps when it comes to changing your ISO settings. Some of the great features when it comes to the stills photography that have been added to firmware version 2 of the Z9 can really help you get the most out of your camera when you're shooting stills. One that's been really useful today when we've been tracking and following fast moving subjects is now that the viewfinder can run at 120 hertz. Just gives you a really nice smoother view through the viewfinder, especially when you're following a fast moving subject going across your frame. Right, so. This is a great place for two different stills features. Here I'm going to do pre-release capture. I can't see them coming into the frame. I'll focus that, take that shot. The great thing about pre-release is I get that whole one second prior to him coming into my frame, which is really great. And I can also just take those stills that we just caught and use them for motion blend. So I can blend them in together. We get this great picture of him coming just off that jump and then landing on the other side. I'm shooting nice and wide here on a 1424. It's worth noting that when you choose the continuous 30 and continuous 120 options, do keep in mind that when you are shooting in 30 frames a second or 120 frames per second, the Z9 is shooting in JPEG. So it's full resolution JPEGs at 30 frames a second and at 120 frames per second it will be 11 megapixel JPEGs. Okay, so this is a great location to demonstrate the new customizable auto focusing areas. I've got these really nice long rectangles so as you come sweeping around the corner, 
camera just keeps me focused and all comes together nicely. So you can choose any of those shapes and you can store up to two of those in a custom area. So you can quickly switch and change between which shapes are going to work best for you. Either this long rectangle shape here or I could maybe go for a straight vertical shape. We've not necessarily needed to use it in an environment in a shooting situation like this today, but we now have the ability to really dim down the brightness level of the Z9 viewfinder. The Z9 viewfinder is incredibly bright, but in those low light situations, you don't want it to be too bright that you have to kind of adjust your eyesight when looking through it or bring in the camera to your eye. So you can really fine tune the level of brightness that you need for this viewfinder in those just really low light situations, just to make sure you see exactly what you want to see. One of the new features that's in firmware 2.0, which is great for stills, is called Recall Shooting Functions Hold. The key difference here is that we now have the ability to just push and let go and it will hold those settings for you. Previously with Recall Shooting Functions, you had to push and hold a button and you had to then let go and it revert back to your previous settings. So Recall Shooting Functions Hold is going to be great for something like this. I'm going to get the guys to come around the centre of this corner and I'm going to be able to then do a really nice pan shot as I'm push and hold my Recall Shooting Function. So I have one setup for fast shutter speed and then I'm going to have another setup for slow shutter speed for that panning shot. This next feature is great for those of you that really like shooting long exposures. We've been able to use extended shutter speeds for a while now, up to 900 seconds, and the camera counts down as that exposure happens. But now, if you shoot in time or bulb, the camera will count up so you know how long you've shot for and you can shoot for a specific time or for an extended duration that you need for a particular shot. So for this shot as an example, I want to smooth out the water in the foreground and I want to get some really nice movement in the cloud cover that's above us here. So I might be shooting somewhere around about five minutes or four minutes or five minutes and 36 seconds. Slow shutter speed in video is a new feature of this firmware. This is a first for Nikon cameras. We've always been able to control our shutter speed when it comes to stills, but when it comes to video, you're always stuck to use a shutter speed based on your frame rate. Now we can break that and we can then drop our shutter speed down. A couple of good reasons for that. We can take in extra light in low light situations like this. We can also do some really cool things with motion and lights like this as well. So whether you're using your Z9 for stills, for video, or for both, firmware version 2 adds lots of new features that can really allow you to get the most out of the camera no matter what situation you're using it in.